My name is Jeff Bertrand. I moved here about two and a half years ago from Nashville, Tennessee. During the pandemic, um, I make outsider pop art with a folk art flair. I take items that are untraditional and I do spooky pop art on them. I've been doing that for like 16 years and I do uh, festivals around the country. I do con uh, conventions and do private work, commission work, gallery shows. Um, I've done t-shirt designs and album covers. We chose Pittsburgh because we were getting fed up with living in the South and we were just needed a change. Nashville became a town that didn't really seem welcoming to me either and we just wanted to start anew and we decided to pick a crazy time like uh, the middle of the pandemic to do so and uh, we made a list of places we, we liked and uh, kept coming back to Pittsburgh. So that's why we decided here. I think the first time I did a painting on a Ouija board, it kind of took me off guard, but it was a commission. One of my collectors in Nashville, you know, being in Nashville, you're doing country music stars and stuff like that. You're like, I'm painting Johnny Cash, or I'm gonna paint Hank Williams, Dolly Parton, because that's what people want. And then I had a, a client was like, can you paint the Virgin Mary for me on a Ouija board? I was like, fuck, oh, that sounds like really, really cool. Um, but super edgy. And I was like, I'll give it a try. And it turned out really cool. And that was the first one. And I think from that time period, I did about, I've done about 35 cents, just different, you know, different uh, takes on newer and older Ouija boards and like my weird uh, pop art style on top of it. Um, I would say doing the weird art or doing the weird art on the weird subject matter probably stemmed from collecting oddities and being around that community and uh, you know having weird stuff to look at and then you know simply loving like antiquing and finding weird things along the way instead of painting on canvas I'm like oh there's a, a meat cleaver there I think that would be a really cool surface to do art on or hey that Oh my God, it's an old antique medical bone saw. Nobody paints on that. Why can't I be the one to do it? So it's almost like taking like the old farmy folk art, paint on old saw blades and stuff like that, but do it a newer, weirder way. And I would say that's kind of how the two worlds, you know, living, growing up in the South, being around the weird folk art that your grandmother had. And then, you know, collecting oddities, being into like, that community is almost like pulling the two worlds together. And that's how I kind of came up with the idea. I would say first and foremost, my love is for like Halloween. Um, even vintage Halloween, you know. Like, in this history, like weird history, it all kind of comes together. Even a lot of like the, the pop icons that are in scary movies derived from real true life serial killers or folklore of that. Um, you know, we wouldn't have, you know, Pennywise or It without John Wayne Gacy and, you know, the terror that people created, like he created with clowns. You know, it, it almost became, the really scary element almost became pop culture. And I wouldn't say like watered down, but almost made in a pill form for like normal people to swallow. And I, I don't know, I think it's my, simply my, like, my love of the spooky, in the elements that are like not an, not an easy or like a I don't know how to say it like not necessarily shock value but I think when we see something scary it invokes like an emotion and I think you know when you're creating art you want to evoke emotions and to me being a fan of Halloween that's like the, the, the simplest and the truest one for me to be able to deliver based off of um, the different spooky elements I would, you know, see or use in my work. My earliest memories would be hanging out in front of the TV with crayons and finger paints and just being, you know, preoccupied with trying to recreate what I see on the, te the television. And I, as long as I can remember, I've been making art. I even have some old cards I sent my grandmother, like Christmas cards. And I was drawing like really fancy pictures 
before I could ever write my name correctly. So I would, t- I would, I would guess like probably drawing before I could write, and uh, I'm still lucky enough to still do so. One of my earliest uh, memories of like outsider art was when I would walk to school, and I lived in a, you know, not the same neighborhood, so I would have to cross the tracks to go to school. And um, a lot of people are like, you know, where did you see like outsider or edgy art first? And you know, I, I remember at 10, 11, 12 years old seeing trains pass by. And it was like a moving gallery of sorts. And, you know, I would see that, and then I became excited to walk to school. And then I used to bring my sketch pad, and I used to try to, like, recreate what I would see on the trains. And I would say that would probably be my earliest um, inspiration with outsider, non traditional art, would be seeing, like, the really elaborate murals and throw ups and pieces on trains, you know, that travel around the country. And that really influenced me to, you know, you know, different color theories and different lettering methods and characters that really inspire a lot of my cartoonier work and, and my uh, pop art. I would say mostly self-taught. I had a really good high school art teacher. Um, her name was Doris Bills, and she helped create the, uh, the art programs in Middle Tennessee and get those started in the 60s. And I was very fortunate and lucky to have her. I had her from freshman year all the way to, I was her teaching assistant in the high school. She was super impactful, um, very fortunate to have that. And um, from there, I got accepted to a, big, a bunch of big art institutes. But growing up really poor, I couldn't really afford it to do that. So I ended up going the route of going to community college. So I went to a community college for a couple semesters and hated it. And I hated it so much, I was like, I'm just gonna transfer and go to like a state school. So I ended up going to, or, or trying to go to MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University. And my transfer got uh, messed up. So I ended up taking a semester off. And by doing that, I discovered that I was really into tattooing. So I became a tattoo artist, an apprentice as a tattoo artist. So I would say most of my training would be from the tattoo standpoint and or self-taught other artists and just by doing, really. Um, and I, I would say that that's probably the purest form of being a folk artist is just making a bunch of mistakes until you make the right mistakes that turn into nicer work. I transitioned out of tattooing, um, I would say for life reasons. And, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, being completely covered in tattoos. Like there, at the time, like this was early, early 2000s. It wasn't ex- as accepted as it is now. Yeah, and I knew some people in the hair industry and everybody was like covered in tattoos and they're like, that's totally cool, we, you know, it's not even a big deal. And I uh, started looking into it, you know, I did a lot of hair on the side for friends and whatnot and I got a lot of compliments and decided to give it a shot. And I've been doing uh, barbering and working in the hair industry for, I would say close to 16 years now. Yeah, I enjoy it, and it's flexible, and it's artistic, and when I'm not doing that, I'm doing art shows and conventions, and they kind of, they keep it flexible, so they know that I'm an artist first, and if I need to do a show, they, they give me time to do a show, so it's like the perfect combination. I work at a barber shop called Mac Modern Barbering in Mount Lebanon, outside of Pittsburgh, and I've been working there since day one of me moving here. They were friends of mine on Instagram, and they followed my work on Instagram, that's how I got the job here, really. Because I was working at a pretty well-established shop in Nashville. We did a lot of like celebrity clientele and stuff, so I was like, you know, any kind of transition, I'll take it, you know. But I was, you know, that kept me there for so long. And once, you know, that the fun of that started wearing out, I was like, why am I still here? My wife transitioned from working in the music industry for 10 years to working from home, and she was like, Jeff, we can go anywhere you want to go was like, well, let's do some nerd research and see where like quality of life versus cost of living is the best. And, and that's the huge reason why we're here. I went to hair school first and I worked at some high-end salons. And one of the first shops I worked at, we did Paramore's hair, Haley Williams, if you're sure you know who that is. And I was the apprentice and I worked under Brian and Darla and the other staff that's involved there and uh, Brian became her uh, partner in her color line and 
when I was working there, they would let me showcase my art on the walls. And um, Haley bought some of my work. And that really sparked it, like, hey, I can do hair and I can do art, and it's okay, because it all goes together. I worked at other, sh you know, other kind of high-end shops, and um, the recession hit, you know, took a little time off and reevaluating re or whatnot, and I was like, I'm tired of doing women's hair, I just wanna work at a barber shop. And, uh, you know, I apprenticed under a barber and learned shaving and stuff like that, and so everything kind of came together, and I've been doing that ever since, really. When I do, like, really edgy styles, when people bring me pictures, they want a lot, they want like designs in their haircuts and stuff like that. And I would say without the art background, it would be next to impossible to figure out how to do that. So a lot of times like I'll do a really tight fade and then I'll like draw with like markers on people's heads and then I'll like, you know, shave it out and stuff like that. And if I didn't know what I was doing artistically, there would be no way I could even tackle that. I think like artistically, I've just tried to reinvent what I'm doing and keep pushing the envelope and reevaluating like what art can be and that is what I try to chase I feel like with my art and I think when you simply just do art on a canvas it's like a very watered down version of what it truly could be and it's very much a limitation in my opinion and uh, I just think as an artist, like, me deciding what art can be and how I chase that is, like, my true, like, the vibe and the path that I want to go with my artwork. I would say my favorite art that I create is probably, like, the larger surfaces. Like, I do mural, mural work sometimes. So I've done some large murals for businesses and stuff, and that's always rad to see, you know, like, a, a working business where customers get to see your art every single day. That's really rad. But I would say also, my favorite art is usually the last thing I created. And my art is almost like my kids, you know, like you can't pick a favorite. But, you know, as an artist growing, you learn things as you go along. And I always feel like the last thing you made, I would say depicts where I'm at and where I'm going. And what I've learned kind of along, along the way, or I've learned the most, and that's the last thing I put all that work in and time into. So I would, I would always say like the last thing I created is my favorite thing. My wife used to work in the music business for 10 years, and she worked at like record companies and stuff like that. Um, I would say my only involvement would be, I've done t-shirts for bands like Paramore, and I've done album covers for Americana, Americana artists, and indie rock artists, I could see myself doing more album covers. I would love to be involved in something like that. Or poster designs or in that way. Um, album art would be super cool. But I really, I don't know a lot of musicians here. Um, that probably just because I'm new here. Um, but I follow a lot of people back home. And, and musicians that travel, um, like my buddy Kylie that I did the album cover for, she's getting ready to play a date here as an opening act for a bigger Americana artist. Um, so we'll probably go to that show. Um, but yeah, I would love to see my art on more album covers. That would be super bad.